Here on the out-of-bounds under. The drive by Griffin. Shot under pressure is good. Stacy had a defender right on her, but she still pulled up and made the shot from close range, about six feet away. It's her first basket. Birds lead 4-2. Parker with it for the Illini. To the left wing, Henderson. Into the baseline. Sheeler turnaround shot too long. Not good. The rebound underneath for Vasey, and now she lost it. Knocked away by Griffin. Picked off by Schmidt, but then a travel against the Redbirds. That's one of those frustrating calls. Uh, you know, you always say she traveled because she was pushed, not because she really wanted to. Melanie Marcy, an early sub into the ballgame for the Birds, as out goes Val Trami for Illinois State. Marcy, a 6-1 sophomore from Oak Park, Illinois. Biggest player on the Redbird roster as Sheeler puts it to the corner. Now gets it back. Turnaround shot. Good. Sheeler has both of Illinois' baskets. It's a 4-4 game here. We're about two and a half minutes in as now the Illini shows some full court pressure. And it's a zone press as Valdez stops the three-quarter court. The pass across the timeline to Stacy Griffin. Griffin now up to the top. And a long one for Schmidt is off the mark. Not good. And the rebound chased down by Griffin. In the corner, Valdez. Here's Stacy. Now in the corner, Valdez, Illinois, in the zone. As Schmidt has it at the top. Right side, Griffin. 19 to shoot for the Redbirds. Here's the pass to the baseline. Vossel snatches it. She's double teamed. Her pass tipped out of bounds. 13 to shoot now for the Red. Well, the shot clock keeps going as the uh, time is stopped. And by the time they get the shot clock stopped, there's nine seconds left. And Jill Hutchison calling that now to the official's attention. There should be 13 seconds on the shot clock. Yes, uh, got a little carried away over there at the scorer's table, but fortunately Jill was on top of it. Well, they put 12 back on. 4-4 the score. Illinois State and Illinois tied here in the early going. Three minutes into the contest. Here's Griffin driving from the wing, and now she's tied up. Held ball, and it will be Illinois State's possession. They did I wondered how they'd, uh, they'd rule at the beginning of the ballgame. They ruled that that was a possession for Illinois before the Birds stole the ball. Oh, no, wait a minute. Now it's going to go the other way. Well, I can see that. I'm not sure <laughs> yeah. Illinois really had possession at the start. I agree, Dick. So it is Illinois' ball now as Parker gets the inbounds pass against the pressure. She's across the timeline. Three on two break. Here it comes inside the Sheeler. Her pass back out. It's tipped, but it still finds its way to Henderson. And now her pass is kicked out of bounds by the Redbirds. And Illinois will inbound it. Well, they ruled it was not kicked, but uh, went off somebody's leg. So no fresh shot clock here for the Illini as they put it in play. 4-4, still the score. Parker to the high post. Here's Bergren on the drive. She stops. Back to Parker. Three-pointer. That's way off. An air ball. Rebounded by Facey, but stolen by Griffin. Stacy now between two defenders, and she is fouled by one of them. They're doing a lot of trapping on the rebound. That's how we were able to be successful on the fast break. They're putting two people on the rebound, and we just need to be able to get the ball out quickly and get somebody down the court, and we should be able to convert. That's Bergren's foul, and that's her second, and that's pretty good news for the Redbirds here, just three and a half minutes into the game. Schmidt with it now, coming to the left wing, putting on the brakes, going to Griffin. Long one is on the way, and in and out, not good. The rebound, Valdez got a piece of it. It's saved in by Marcy, but out of bounds it goes, and it will belong to Illinois. Good effort by the Birds to get the offensive rebound. Melanie Marcy could make a difference in this game. They need her to, to play well and contribute in the post position. As the Birds apply the full court pressure, here's Vasey ahead to Parker. She gets it across the timeline. Still 4-4 four to four game, almost four minutes in. Henderson, a baseline drive, and a layup is short, and the ball tipped out of bounds by the Birds, and it still belongs to Illinois. And both teams concerned about their defenses, but uh, they're averaging a minute a, a, a point so far, and that's pretty good. Henderson in the right corner. Down the baseline, Sheeler had it knocked away. Great defense by Griffin as Schmidt gets it. Here's the pass to Valdez. The layup, no, but a foul is called as Schmidt and Valdez ran the floor well that time, and Kristen will get to the free throw line. Good decision that time by Jenny Schmidt to give up the ball, and uh, fortunately, Kristen was able to, to draw the foul. But nice fast break opportunity. And Henderson's first foul, that's four already on the Illini. And to the free throw line goes Kristen Valdez, the junior from Boulder, Colorado, who has attempted seven free throws so far this year and has made six of them. Birds have made 72% of their free throws. That's good, but not as good as the Illini, who have made 78% this year from the line. Kristen puts that one down, and it's a 5-4 Illinois State lead. First point of the game for Valdez. And the second one is long, and the rebound, Bergren had it, lost it. Here's Trami back in the game. She got her shot blocked. She got it back, and now there's a whistle, and it'll be a travel against Illinois State. 
Dick, she's really struggled since she's had to wear the mask, and I know she didn't play well at Duke, and she's struggling a little bit tonight. As she heads to the sidelines now, an official's timeout has been called. 15-56 left in the first half, 5-4. Birds have the early lead. Back right after this on WJBC. A couple of men's scores. Wake Forest leads Mississippi State. 28-9, that's in the first period. And at the half, Penn State over Tennessee Chattanooga, 34-25. to As far as uh, other women's teams are concerned, in the Missouri Valley, Creighton at home against Nebraska tonight, Wichita State at home against Oklahoma, Northern Iowa playing at Wisconsin, Illinois with a length of the court pass, gets an easy basket, Bergeron on the other end of it, scores her first hoop as the Redbird full court pressure that time Allow the easy hoop for the Illini, and it's now 6-5 Illinois. Birds have it in the front court. Bounce pass to the baseline, knocked away, but recovered by Valdez. She spins and gets it out to Schmidt against the Illinois zone. Inside it goes, Vossel shot off the glass. It hangs on the rim and falls the wrong way for the Birds, and it's rebounded by Sheeler of Illinois. So the Illini with the lead and the ball now for the first time in the game. Here's Bergman at the top against Stacy Griffin. The shot, it's a great pass, and the layup is there. She made it look like a shot. Nicole Basie there to pick off the pass and lay it in. A three-point Illinois lead. Their biggest, biggest for both teams, actually, is now losing the ball is Schmidt, and it's a held ball. It will be Illinois State's turn, but right now that full-court pressure bothering the Redbirds a little bit. The line I have come out very aggressive, and, and we're just a little bit lackadaisical right now, and it all started with the long full-court pass. We're going to have to turn it up a notch to stay in this game. Here's Schmidt across the timeline, bounce pass Griffin on the left wing. Stacy picks it up, goes baseline, the drive by Vassal, ducks under two defenders and gets it to Trami, who puts it in. Nifty play, Val Trami gets the basket, birds back to within one, 8-7 the score. Here's Parker now against Valdez, the lob pass to the corner, Henderson back to Parker. And she brings it back up between the circles. Left side, Henderson in the corner, long shot, Sheeler missed it, the long rebound, chased down by Illinois, now it's loose, Griffin picks it off again. Boy, she's recovered several loose balls and she gets it to Valdez. Kristen across the timeline. Here's the pass to Jenny. 15-footer. That is good. And the Birds regain the lead as Schmidt has her first field goal. 9-8, Illinois State. Here's Parker. Got it knocked out of bounds. Great effort to save it in by uh, Schmidt. And she couldn't quite get there in time, but the Birds uh, have turned it up a little bit now. That's exactly right. And that's the kind of effort we're going to need from everybody for the entire game. As Henderson puts it in play for the Illini. Into the game for them now is Krista Ranking. Into the high post it comes. Bergeron driving on Trami. Missed it off the bottom of the rim. The rebound for Val. The outlet to Schmidt. Birds on the fly. Here's the pass to Valdez. She drives to the goal. Puts it up and rolls it. Good! Kristen Valdez with the basket off the assist from Schmidt. The Birds lead by three. Their biggest advantage. Ranking with the ball as she comes toward the left side. Left wing Henderson back to Ranking. Driving toward the right, Bergeron gets it. In the right corner, here's the lob down the baseline. Turnaround shot, Sheeler got it. Again, quick ball movement, they get the easy basket. And it's a one-point Illinois State lead at 11-10. Valdez cross-court to Griffin. Stacy driving, runs into a defender, out to Jenny. Three-pointer, that one's good! Jenny Schmidt nailed the three, and the Redbirds lead by four, 14-10, biggest lead. Good look that time. Uh, Kristen was covered, and she was able to kick it back out to Jenny, and uh, Jenny stepped up and took the shot. Schmidt now for the season, 13 for 22 from three-point territory as the ball is knocked away by, who else? Stacy Griffin, and it's picked off by Schmidt. Here come the birds. Pass to the right wing, the pull-up baseline jumper short by Vassal, and the rebound, Illinois. And the outlet goes past ranking, but she catches up with it before it goes out of bounds. Cross-court pass, Henderson. She lost it, but she recovers it in the corner. And now a pass into traffic, intercepted by the birds. Birds. Ahead from Schmidt to Vossel. Here's Griffin on the left wing. Back to Vossel. Shot is not good. She got it back. Tries again. Misses again. And the rebound for who? It's a held ball. And it'll belong to Illinois this time. Uh, I'm sure Jill's going to be real happy about the, the hustle, but I'm not sure Kareem Vossel's second shot up there was, was one she would like. Uh, that was a great hustle to get the board. She just needs to be in, under control and get a good second shot. Marcy back into the ball game. Vossel gets her first rest. Mary Jane Johnson in now for the first time for the Birds. As the pass comes in to ranking, Illinois down 14 to 10, facing full court pressure, long pass. It's picked up by Bergren, who drives into Valdez, and Kristen will be called for the foul. They both went for the ball, and Bergren muscled it away, and Kristen didn't have very good position when she came down after that battle. And there was no question, Dick, she was going to the basket. 
Bergren, an aggressive player, forces the foul on Valdez. First on Kristen, first on the Redbirds as Rankin gets the inbounds pass inside. It goes. Trami knocked it out of bounds. Val Trami going around the defender that time to get a piece of the ball and spoil the play. And Illinois will put it in play with 28 to shoot here. And now 12-31 to play in the half. Bird still up four. Bergren gets it left corner. Ranking at the top. Her pass around to the right wing. New player in the game is Katie Coleman for Illinois. Back up to the top. Here's Bergren in the lane. Her pass tipped and stolen by Trami. The Birds forcing several Illinois turnovers. Schmidt to MJ Owens. And now Valdez has it. Up to the top, Marcy. Here's Mary Jane. And Schmidt had it knocked away, and she lost it. It was on the sideline, out of bounds, off of Jenny. And that time, Illinois forced the turnover on the Birds. One thing Jill really has concentrated on this week defensively is bit, has been to move your feet defensively but be very active with your hands. And we have been able to get quite a few deflections and steals by just doing that little thing. Into the game for the first time, Casey Lenhart, big inside player for Illinois. As Bergren has it, she spins, gets it to Coleman, long shot. It's rolling up to the top of the bank board and over the board, not good. Illinois not shooting it very well here in the early going. The Illini now from the field, 5 out of 13. The Redbirds not too much better at 6 out of 14, but the Birds have the 14 to 10 lead as a timeout is called. It's an official's timeout with 11.48 left to play in the first half. 14 to 10 Redbirds back after this here on WJBC. As I mentioned, three other Missouri Valley teams playing this evening. Creighton at home against Nebraska. The Cornhuskers lead that one, 16-14 at about the midway mark of the first half. All of these right around the midway point in half number one. Wichita State and Oklahoma tied 11-11. Northern Iowa playing up at Wisconsin. That's a tough assignment for the Panthers. They trail early 19-9. Right here, it's 14-10 in favor of the Lady Birds who have it across the timeline. Trami got it poked away and Illinois makes the interception. Here's Bergren with it. Her pass to ranking. She drives underneath reverse layup not good and the rebound for the Redbirds Marcy pulled it out of there here's the pass ahead to Jenny Schmidt and she has it now in the front court against the Illinois zone Shanita Stewart into the game for the first time has the ball at the top right now in the corner Marcy gets it Melanie drives toward the goal good move but a great block from behind by Lenhart and Illinois gets the loose ball ranking across the timeline still 14-10 birds on top it's been a while since anybody has scored Coleman inside, but Marcy steps in front of Sheeler and slaps the ball away. And it'll be Illinois' inbounds. Nice post-defensive uh, effort there by Melanie Marcy, and she's going to need to continue to do that. Coleman with the lob, intercepted by Marcy. She does continue to do it as Schmidt gets the ball across the timeline for the Birds. Nine minutes into the game, Redbirds lead here 14-10. to Cross-court pass, here's Jenny Schmidt driving and passing back. Trami fakes the three and goes to Shanita. Stewart with it on the left side. Up top, Trami. Mary Jane a three, and it's a little bit long. Not good, and as it comes down, it's knocked out of bounds, and a foul will be called. It's going to go against the Birds. Lenhart had position, and when she has position, she's in control. She is big. She's a big girl, and she takes up a lot of space, and, and that's why we're going to have to move our feet even more to get around her. Marcy picks up the foul. That's number one on Melanie, and number three on the team. As the birds apply full court pressure, Illinois breaks it down with the dribble. Now the long pass across the timeline to Coleman on the left wing. Up top here's Ranking. Now Bergren to Coleman at the edge of the circle. Stewart against Coleman in the man-to-man -man gives her a little bit of room. Does not fear the shot from her. Here is the shot from Ranking. It's too long. And the rebound for Sheeler. They've got a second chance. Sheeler had it slapped away. She gets it back. Outside Coleman. Right wing Ranking. Inside it goes Lenhart. Shot rolling over the rim and good. Lenhart scores her first basket. Leads down to a basket for the Birds. 14-12. Stewart with it now. To the top, here's Vassal, left of the lane drive, picks it up and flings it back, and now Marcy, an 18-footer. Melanie scores the basket, her first of the game. Birds lead 16-12. Coleman driving at the right wing. Her pass down low to Lenhart, shot is up and good. Great shot by Lenhart. She was right underneath the board, reached back to get the proper angle. She cuts the lead to two. Shanita Stewart with it now at the right wing. Inside it goes. Marcy against Lenhart, turns underneath 
and now drops the ball and did double dribble it. Boy, she made a great move to get past Lenhardt, and then she had ball handling problems. She read the defense well. She's just got to be able to take care of it. Sometimes that's the hardest thing for a post player is to be able to dribble the ball, handle it in close to the basket. Ranking double team to the backcourt, throws it way ahead, almost too far for Lenhardt. It is. She knocked it, but it's picked off by Schmidt. Jenny gets it to Stewart. Back to Schmidt inside Vossel. A shot fake and now a drive and a blocking foul called against Lenhart. Great ball movement by the Birds. And that's foul number one on Casey Lenhart. That's five now on the Illini. I'll tell you one interesting stat right now. The Redbirds have nine steals and Illinois has one. I think they got their one just a couple minutes ago. So definitely the intensity is picked up for the Redbirds defensively. Boy, they are playing good defense. They don't look like a team that's given up 78 a game. Here's the shot by Vossel from the baseline. It's good. Kareem took the inbounds pass and nailed the jump shot about 15 feet along the left baseline. Birds back up by two baskets now. 18-14 the score. Here's Berggren driving on Marcy, who stays with her nicely. Berggren picks up her dribble. Down the baseline goes the pass. Shot by Sheeler. Too long, not good. Rebound, Shanita Stewart. The outlet to Schmidt. Jenny. Into the front court. Her pass tip, but Mary Jane gets it anyway. Owens underneath the bucket. Lost it. Picked away by Sheeler. And now Coleman across the timeline. At the right wing. Against Marcy. Drives baseline. Goes all the way and scores. Melanie let her get a step on her, and there was no help. And Katie Coleman scores her first basket. Two-point Illinois State lead at 18-16. Right wing, Shanita Stewart. Now Vassal at the top. Back to the left side. Here's Schmidt. Marcy, the lob into Vassal, in traffic, back out to Stewart. Shanita fires, and it's way long, and the rebound produces a whistle. And a foul against the Birds. And uh, it's going to go against Jenny Schmidt. She's the first Redbird to pick up a second foul, fourth on the team. Changes for the Illini now. Back in the game is Basie. And in for the first time for Illinois, Marco, uh, excuse me, make it Taja Catchings, the daughter of ex-NBA player Harvey Catchings. She has it now, flips it back, and as she does, she travels. Taja Catchings, a freshman from Bensonville, 6'1 player, averaging 11.5 points a game off the bench. Early in her career here for the Illini, makes the mistake there as the Birds have it in the front court here, Stewart at the right wing. Shanita looks it over and deals it up top to Kareen Vossel. Vossel has given up the dribble. Her pass to Owens on the left wing. Now back to Vossel at the baseline. Kareen drives in and there's heavy contact. Down goes ranking. Foul is called. It's against Illinois. I'm not sure. Is that against Ashley Bergen? If it is... I thought maybe ranking. Yep, you're right. She was moving just a little bit there as those two collided. I, I was hoping. <laughs> yeah, it would have been the third. Yep. You know, Bergeron has not, I don't believe she's been out yet, has she? I don't remember her leaving the court. She picked up that second foul with about uh, 16 minutes still to go in the half, and Teresa Grantz has left her out there, and uh, Ashley Bergeron, the veteran who knows how to play with foul trouble, has averted picking up that third one. It's been interesting to watch her, too. She's uh, definitely the leader on the court, talking and working. A lot of times she's playing with two freshmen out on the court, and she's doing a nice job of helping direct them, and, and that's what every coach hopes for, a leader like that. Vassal on the free throw line. She was fouled in the act of shooting, and she makes the first throw. She's been to the line a lot this year. That was her 26th attempt. Now she fires and rolls that one. Not good. And so the Birds get one point out of that possession as Illinois rebounds the miss. And the Illini come down trailing 19-16. Ranking at the top against Stewart. The Birds have been all man-to-man. -man. We've seen quite a bit of zone from Illinois as Coleman lost it. Picked off by Griffin. Stacy Griffin has about four steals already. Here's the pass to Schmidt. Now Stewart. Right of center. Back to Jenny on the right wing. Schmidt fires, and it's going to be a little bit long, and over the board it goes off the rim, out of play. It belongs to Illinois. Melanie Marcy was trying to set an on-the-ball screen, and, and uh, Jenny just thought she had the outside shot, and she just was a little bit hard with it. And as a result, the whistle blows after the ball goes out of bounds, and we get to another official's timeout. Seven and a half minutes precisely to go here in the first half. 1916, Lady Birds on top by three, as we continue in just a moment here on WJBC. Well, the Redbirds 8 out of 20 from the field. Illinois 8 out of 19, so that's about even. Rebounding 18 to 7 in favor of Illinois. Certainly, uh, we anticipated the Birds would have some problems in that area. Indeed, they are, but they're making up for it with tenacious defensive play. 10 steals compared with 2 for the Illini. Great defensive effort so far by the Birds. you got to be happy with that. Here's Coleman with it. Birds full court pressure. 
and it's caused lots of Illinois turnovers, but they do get it across the timeline here. Coleman with it. Now the lob down low. Bergren gets it. Vossel, great defense. Fourth shot up, not good. The rebound battled for, and they get it, and the shot is not good by catchings, and now the Birds have it. Shanita Stewart with it. So they gave him two shots, but Illinois didn't make either one, and it's still 19-16. Redbirds on top here. We're uh, at seven minutes to go in the first half. Marcy to Stewart on the left wing. She shovels it to Schmidt. Here's Vossel at the top. Right wing, Griffin. Stacy Griffin, great move to the goal. She goes to lay up. No, and the rebound produces a whistle and a foul on Stacy Griffin, who is frustrated that she missed that shot. What a great move, but you've got to finish the play, Leanna. Exactly. Once again, uh, we were trying to set an on-the-ball screen, and she just read it. She read it well and had great pen penetration, but you got to finish it. And then if you don't finish it, you got to keep your cool. You don't make two mistakes in a row, that's for sure. So it's still 1916 birds. As Illinois has the basketball after foul number one against Griffin, number five against the team. Here's the left wing pass to Coleman. Ranking to Coleman. They play catch on the left wing. Ranking now against Stewart at the top. High post it goes. Bergren inside catchings. Layup. No. Rebound for who? A battle for it. Vasey had it. Picked up by Bergren. She goes up and misses, but she's fouled. Ashley Bergren found the loose ball, and she'll get to the free throw line. Dick. We're playing good defense, but we've got to finish off the series. They're getting way too many offensive boards. We've got to get a body on somebody, block out, and, and kind of reward our, our good defense. But we're just playing it about three quarters there. We've got to finish it off and do the little things. Vassal committed the foul, her first team sixth, but it was in the act of shooting. So Bergren, the junior from Barrington, will go to the line. Her father, Howie Bergren, was a standout player at Illinois Wesleyan back in the early 50s as she shoots at home. And that is uh, only her third point. Birds have defended her pretty well. She gets both free throws. 72% are from the line on the year. And she cuts the lead to just one point. 19-18. Birds on top here. Stewart trapped near the timeline, but she gets rid of it to Vassal. Kareen now attacking the bucket. The pass to Griffin. Baseline drive. She gets it back out to Trami. Now outside to Schmidt, who drives and feeds Griffin. Long one is good for Stacy. That's a three. Griffin gets her first three of the ball game, and the Redbird lead up to four at 22 to 18. Illinois with the ball, cross court pass. Here's the shot by Coleman. That's good from inside the arc. A two pointer for Coleman. Redbird lead down to two at 22 to 20. Schmidt with it now, and Illinois in the man to man here. They were zone earlier. Here's Schmidt driving to the right baseline all the way underneath. Layup short off the glass and out of bounds. Off Illinois, two Illini players fighting one another. Birds caught a break there. Another uh, layup opportunity, and we're getting some good shots. We've just got to be able to convert them. Well, they're all, the, the misses, it seems like, have all been right around the basket. There are defenders around, and uh, it's not as easy as it looks, but you've got to convert more of them than the birds have as Trami gets it out to Schmidt. To the right corner. Griffin a long one. And it's no good. And Vassal tipped it out, but it's run down by ranking of Illinois. Good effort by Kareen, but Illinois gets the rebound anyway as Coleman has it up top. Now to the left wing it goes. Shot by Bergren. Not good from 15. Great rebound by Schmidt. She snatched it away from ranking. And here comes Jenny. Schmidt on the move. Baseline pass. Vassal runs over a player. That is a charge. Kareen just lowered her shoulder. She didn't know where the defender was. She was hoping the defender wouldn't be there, but Coleman was set, and the foul was called. Cole has that problem when she puts the ball down. She's she's a much better player, a catch-and-shoot player, or simply a turn-and-shoot, and turn and but she has trouble when she puts the ball on the floor. Seventh foul against the Birds, but that's a player control foul, so no free throws as the Redbirds apply the pressure here. Illinois breaks it down with the pass. Here's Bergren in the front court. The long lob to the basket. Sheeler turns, fires, misses short. Boy, she had an easy shot, and she missed it. And now Schmidt is fouled. Foolish foul by Sheeler, and there's the frustration that we saw the uh, Redbirds guilty of earlier. Absolutely. Nobody likes to make a mistake, but you're a smart player if you can just hustle back on defense and make a good play on the other end. But but don't do uh, something like she did in the official standing right there. You're gonna get you're gonna get called. Sheeler second foul. It puts the Redbirds on the line. It puts a good free thrower at the line. Jenny Schmidt, the sophomore out of Normal Community High School. The top three-point shooter percentage-wise in Illinois State history as she makes the free throw. And that's her sixth point. She has one three in this game. She's one for three from long range. Another one coming. She can build the lead to four, and she does. Equaling the biggest lead for the Redbirds in the ballgame. 
24-20 the score. Across the timeline it goes. Bergren wide open as Basie at the basket. She scores the easy goal as the Birds didn't get back quickly enough off the full court pressure. 24-22 now the score. Birds by two. Vossel with it. Not to Griffin on the left side. Stacy dribbles that way and pedals it to Valtrami. Long one for Val. That's going to be no good. And the rebound for Illinois. Vasey took it down. Here's Ranking. Long pass Bergren against Griffin. Driving shot. Good defense. Forced to miss, but Lenhart rebounds it in. Casey Lenhart's third basket. We're tied now. 24 apiece. Griffin across the timeline. 4-16 to play here in the half. Inside Trami. Great lead pass, and Val lost it out of bounds. Dick, she has trouble when the ball is low, and when she picked it up off the dribble, that's where she has trouble seeing with that mask on. Unfortunate turnover. Val wearing the mask because she broke her nose in the Missouri game. She'll have it operated on tomorrow, Leanna? Exactly. It's very, very crooked, and uh, it's a minor surgery, but she's going to have it done to get it fixed. Ranking with it for Illinois. Illini looking to take their first lead in quite a while. Here's the pass down low to Lenhart. She stumbles a bit and now passes back out to Coleman. Birds are in a zone here. They've been zoning the past few times down the floor. Coleman with it. Nine to shoot. Ranking does shoot. She misses. Great box out. And the rebound by Boss just in the ballgame. Kendra Boss gets it ahead. Trami driving. Pulls up. Passes back. Griffin a three. Not good. And the rebound Ranking. And back comes Illinois. Three and a half minutes to play as the ball is knocked from behind by Valdez. Just back in the ball game. Picked off by Griffin. Here's the pass to Jenny. Pull up 15-footer. No. Rebound for Illinois. As Bergeron head Basie wide open at the other end but didn't see her. So the Illini have it back in the half-court situation as Coleman has it near the top against Valdez as the Birds now are in the man-to-man. -man. Tough screen on Valdez, but Illinois can't use it as Vasey gets it to Bertrand left of center. Underneath it goes to Ranking. Turnaround shot. That's no good. And the rebound tracked down by Griffin. Still tied. 24 apiece. Valdez across the timeline. Kristen Valdez at the right wing. Here's Boss with it. The freshman just in the ballgame. Griffin with it now. Valtrami lob inside. Kendra catches and shoots it in with the left hand. Great score by Kendra Boss. And the Redbirds up to 26-24. Nice ball movement that time by the Redbirds and hitting the open player was exactly what uh, they were looking to do. Bergren with it at the left wing. Two and a half minutes now to play in the half. Here's Coleman in the corner. And now the pass by Rankin tipped out of bounds by the Birds. 14 to shoot for the Illini as they put it in play. Henderson has been sitting for quite a while. She'll come back in the ballgame, as will the freshman Jessica, or rather, uh, Melissa Parker. And now we get an official's timeout. I thought we were due one, and sure enough, we are. 2.25 left in the half. Redbirds lead 26-24 over the Illini as we continue after this on WJBC. 26-24, Lady Birds with a two-point lead over the Illini. A couple of men's Missouri Valley scores. Evansville playing at home against Robert Morris leads 28-21 in the first half. Kansas State at home against Wichita State and the Wildcats lead that one 22 to 19. Well, right here the Lady Birds playing some tenacious defense, struggling a little bit on the offensive end. It's the flip side of what we've seen most of the season, Leanna. Exactly, and I think the encouraging thing is offensively is we're, we're getting good shots. They're just not falling for us right now, and hopefully we can we can fix that and continue to play good defense and, and get a little bit of a lead here. Illinois has put it in play. They've got 10 to find a shot. Here's Coleman with it. Up to the top, Parker into the post, and uh, Lenhart gets it and misses in and out of there on the rebound boss. How did that thing not go down? I don't know, as Griffin has it in the front court. Baseline drive. She turns and gets it to Trami. Up top, Schmidt. Right wing, it goes to Kristen Valdez. Two minutes now to play in the half. Trami, 17-footer, good. Val builds the Illinois State lead back to four. Trami's second basket. A lot of Redbirds have scored in this game. Good balance on the offensive end. And now the ball kicked by Parker, but right to her teammate, Coleman. Parker picks it up, and this time she throws it to Coleman. And Coleman misses the shot, and the ball tipped out of bounds by Lenhart. It belongs to the Birds. Well, I think the Illini got away with a double dribble here, and we just hit it out down there and got it, so we're even now. As the Birds bring it across the timeline with just under 100 seconds to play here in the first half. Redbirds are up four. They've played well in this game, especially on the defensive end. Valdez to the freshman boss. Now it's Griffin across the top. Man-to-man -man for Illinois. They played a lot of zone earlier. Redbirds have worked the shot clock down to seven seconds. Here's Schmidt from the top, attacking. Baseline pass. Shot by Trami. That's short, and the rebound for Illinois with 109 left in the half. Coleman dribbles the ball into the front court. 
Parker with it now between the rings. Goes toward the left side, picks it up, the lob, nice pass, Lenhart layup, she blew it, and the rebound for the Birds. Trami gets it. Layups on both ends blown. Now we're down to 51 seconds to play in the half. Here's the pass down low, Boss gets it back out. Griffin a drive, and she trips and falls, and she's fouled by Coleman with 45 seconds to play in the half. Kendra Boss right on that series just did a smart thing. She saw the penetration coming. She slid up the lane to get out of the way, and she's really come a long way. I know Marla Maupin has uh, spent a lot of time working with her, and she could uh, really help the Redbirds in this game and in, in future games if we could get a post player that could come in and, and give the starters a little bit of a break. To the free throw line here goes Stacy Griffin, and the first of the one and one is good. Stacy's sixth point, and the Redbirds have their biggest lead of the night. 29-24, Illinois State. Another one for Stacy is good. And the Birds have made six of their eight free throws, and they lead by a half dozen at 30-24. to 24. Difference between game clock and shot clock, about 14 seconds as Illinois has it in the front court. Here's Parker moving toward the left. Henderson up top. Right wing it goes. Now Henderson, a shot fake or pass fake as it goes inside the Lenhart. She is either tied up or fouled. They called the foul on Stacy Griffin. Stacy had some of the ball, but apparently was also on the arm of Casey Lenhart, who will go to the free throw line. Lenhart has attempted only six free throws all year. She's made half of them. Well, Jill just said to Stacy Griffin she was doing what she was supposed to do. She was in weak side, and she just kind of got caught a little bit. Lenhart makes the free throw. Illini three for three from the line as now Owens off the bench replacing Griffin who's just picked up her second foul. Jill wants to make sure she doesn't get her third here in the final 28 seconds of the half. The lead is down to five as Lenhart looks for her seventh point. She's or her eighth point, excuse me. She's got it. And the Birds now have a chance for the final shot of the period. Full court pressure by the Illini. Valdez across the timeline. Here's Mary Jane Owens driving to the wing, picking it up and feeding it out to Jenny, who shoots a long one. She shot it too early, and she missed it. And the rebound tracked down by Valdez. That saves the day. At the baseline, the shot by Owens is good with nine seconds to play in the half. Six-point lead for the Birds. Here's Coleman with five left at the timeline. Parker, now a long one, is not good by Parker. Rebound off in time. No good by Lenhart. And the Redbirds go to the locker room, up by 6. 32 to 26 is the score. Redford's got away with a little bit of a mistake down there, Leanna, as uh, Jenny Schmidt probably took that three-point shot too early for Jill Hutchison's pleasure. Yes, and, it, it, you know, it's one of those where you're upset because she took the shot, but you're happy because we got the rebound and MJ hit it. And then we come down, and I'm sure Jill's not happy because we didn't block out. So I, I'd say she's probably going in a little happy, but a little... Uh, she, she's going to point out a few things, and especially the rebounding. She's got to be happy about the steals, but she definitely needs to talk about rebound. Very confusing for Jill. She's unhappy with the shot, happy with the uh, offensive rebound and the basket, unhappy they didn't block up, but happy the Illini missed the shot. She doesn't know how to feel. Well, and I know she's happy we got a lead, so <laughs> you, you've just got to uh, talk about the things you're doing wrong and, and you know emphasize what you are doing well and build on it and, and ho hope for a good second half. That's the bottom line as the Birds lead it by 6, 32 to 26 is our score. We'll come back with more here in just a moment on WJBC. And here we go as the Redbirds have the first possession here of the second half. And here's Jenny Schmidt at the right wing. Schmidt attacking the bucket, goes to the baseline underneath the basket. Her pass back out to Vossel. Kareen deals it to Griffin. Now Trami, her pass flies past Vossel, but Schmidt there to back up the play. Now Valdez, a left baseline drive, and she tried to shoot it up, and she may have drawn the foul as, yes, a foul has been called against Illinois, and that may have been rather fortunate for the Redbirds as Valdez really took it into some traffic. And that's a habit that she has had, and I thought she was actually doing better with, but there were three blue shirts right there in front of her, and she was very fortunate to get the call. And it's against Sheila, and that is number three on her. She's the first player in the game to pick up a third foul. Valdez makes the first of two free throws. She was fouled in the act of shooting. And Kristen has her fourth point as the Redbirds now lead by seven and now make it eight. Biggest lead of the game for either team. 34-26 the score. Illinois State with the full court pressure. Bergren gets the pass and dribbles across the timeline. And now Parker sets up the half-court offense against the Redbird man-to-man. -man. High post Sheeler. She turns and goes to Henderson in the right corner. Henderson dribbles toward the basket. Now flips it inside. Sheeler shot good. In the lane, about six feet away from the basket. With a player on her, pretty tough. Sheeler scores her fourth basket of the game. The lead back down to six for the Birds. 
Vassal to the wing. Griffin has it. Now Kareen. And she nearly traveled. Got the ball down on the floor. Driving layup way off the mark. But she was fouled. And that was a little bit reminiscent of Valdez's drive. Yeah, exactly. It was instant replay and she went up with her left hand which is what you want her to do but she was short with it and uh, very, very fortunate to get the call. The whistle was a little late. <laughs> Maybe he was blocked out. Perhaps as Vassal goes to the free throw line. The junior from Chicago fires the first of two good. Birds have made all three of their free throws here in this half and they've built the lead back to seven points. Kareen with a half dozen. Came into the game. Shooting 76% from the line. She makes both of these. And the lead is back to eight with 19 minutes to play. 36-28 Redbirds. Here's Parker now against the man-to-man. -man. Toward the left. Now she dribbles back to the right. As her pass comes in to Lenhart. Back to Parker. Inside Lenhart. Great position. Her layup is good. Good two-man game there. Or two-woman game. And it's 36-30. Redbirds up six. Griffin with it. On the left wing. Vassal up top. Now Valdez has it between the circles. Here's Jenny Schmidt on the right side. Into the lane it goes. Turning Trami. Great move to the goal. And she missed the left-hand layup. Too hard off the glass. The rebound for Illinois. But the steal by Schmidt. And Jenny goes the other way and lays it. And misses it off the bottom of the glass. Lenhart right next to her. Bothered Schmidt enough so that she altered her shot. Lenhart gets the rebound. Illinois comes the other way. Two missed opportunities there for the Birds. Parker inside. Stealing the pass is Vashel. She stepped in front of Henderson. And the Redbirds come the other way. The long feed. Trami underneath the basket. She has to get rid of it out to Valdez. Up top, Jenny. A three is good. And the Redbird lead is up to nine. Well, some patience there for the Birds. They got the three-point shot from Schmidt, her second of the game. And Teresa Grintz wants a 20-second timeout here with 17. Redbirds had won their last game, but not in great fashion. But the Birds outplaying Illinois so far in this one as the Illini now put it in play. Parker across the timeline. The freshman point guard drifts toward the left side. Her feet over the head of Lenhart. Out of play it goes. It belongs to the Redbirds. And Jenny Schmidt will bring it into the front court. Here's Griffin. Moves toward the baseline. Now backs off. Her pass up top to Vassal. Kristen Valdez has it. Kristen moves toward the left and feeds it to Schmidt. Right side, Trami. Here's Schmidt with it. 13 to shoot. Inside it goes. Trami turns, fires it back out, and fires it right into the Redbird bench beyond Valdez and out of play. I'm not sure who the pass was to. It was definitely off the mark. It was a lot closer to Jill on the bench than I think it was any of our players on the court. Jill can't make it from there, and so that was not a good pass. As now a foul is called against Valdez, crashing into the screen setter Henderson and knocking her to the floor. And Kristen picks up her second foul, first on the team here in the half. Well, Jenny Schmidt took a little responsibility for that. It's her job to call that screen and give Kristen the opportunity to step over, and she didn't do that. As the Illini put it in play, nine-point lead for the Redbirds. Here's Parker coming toward the left. 17-15 left to play. Parker finds Sheeler. Birds have gone to a zone inside toward Bergren. Now back out. Henderson has it. Her lob into Bergren. The help defense is there, but the defender went right by Bergren, who then laid it up and scored. Only her second basket of the game. Redbird lead down to seven. 39-32 the score. Here's Kareen Vossel. Griffin gets it right side. Stacy the bounce pass into the post. Driving is Tr or, uh, Vossel back out to Kristen. Valdez makes the 18-foot shot. Valdez is second basket. Redbirds lead 41-32. Nice play there. Nice execution. Parker behind the back with the dribble. Comes into the free throw circle. Now backs off. And finds Sheeler. 14-footer from right of the lane. Way off the mark. The rebound. A battle. Bergren out. Muscles the Redbirds for it. And then a foul is called against the Birds. We uh, had our chance for the, the rebound. We weren't able to hang on to it. And uh, actually probably fouled before they ended up calling it. So... Melanie Marcy had just checked into the game. She picked up the foul. Her second. Team second. It was on the shot. And Bergren will go to the line. And her free throw is good. That's the second possession. They're, they're I think, at this point, going to try to get the ball into Bergren's hands a little bit more and, and let her be the one to get him back in this game. Both free throws good for Bergren. She's made all four. And it's 41-34. Birds up seven. And Bergren held to... 
four points in the first half. She already has four here in the first four minutes of the second half. Here's Vassal. She threw it behind Valdez, who had broken to the bucket. The ball saved in by Griffin, but taken by Henderson. Illinois on the fly. Henderson pass inside Bergeron. Layup. Good. She got the spin on the rim as the ball was partially blocked, but it spun in there, and the lead down to five now, 41-36. Vassal with it to Jenny Schmidt. Schmidt driving into traffic, spins, finds Griffin on the wing. Stacy up top to Melanie Marcy. Now around the horn it goes, Valdez in the left corner. 13 to shoot for the Birds. Skip pass up top, now it comes inside. Here's Marcy turning, can't get her shot away. Her pass is tipped and stolen. Bergren the other way. Vassal trying to catch up, but Bergren has the layup. She blew it. Griffin rebounds it, and a foul on Bergren. After she missed the layup, she reached and fouled, and that's her third. That's exactly some of the fouling action we've seen where you, you miss a layup or you miss a shot and then you turn around and, and make a foul. And fortunately, that worked in our favor that time. It would be nice to get her on the bench with some fouls. I think Bergeron was anticipating a block effort there and the defender didn't do anything and it threw her off. She missed the shot, then committed the foul. And now we get an official's timeout. 15.35 to play. Birds up 5. 41-36 our score as we continue after this on WJBC. In men's basketball tonight, Penn State has defeated Tennessee Chattanooga 73-63. Northwestern trails at home at the half against San Diego State 33-31. Iowa playing at Drake, and the Hawkeyes lead 50-22 at the intermission. The Bulls against Milwaukee tonight, and Chicago has a 26-23 lead after one period. Right here, the Lady Birds ahead 41-36 as Illinois State has put it in the front court here. Here's Griffin with it on the left wing. Mary Jane Owens into the ball game. Melanie Marcy also off the bench. The starters on the floor are Valdez, Griffin, and Schmidt. Here's the shot by Kristen. Not good from three. The rebound tracked down by Griffin. Now knocked out of bounds off an Illinois player. And a foul called. Boy, Stacy Griffin is playing with some intensity tonight. Every time the ball comes down, she is just doing everything to get to it, get her hands on it, uh, put a body on them. She's she's really made a difference here for the Redbirds. As the ball is put in play by Illinois State. And a missed shot in the rebound for Sheeler. And back comes Illinois. That foul on Henderson was her second. Here's Parker with it coming toward the left. Lead down to five for the Birds as Sheeler drives and lays it up. She snuck inside of Vassal that time. And the basket for Sheeler is her fifth of the game, and the lead is down to three points. 41-38 the score. Here's Vassal with it now. Her pass to the wing. Schmidt inside Kareen takes it toward the goal. Her pass to Valdez. Now she dribbles, picks it up, and throws it back out to Marcy, and the Birds start over with 14 to shoot. Now Henderson on the arm of Schmidt. Henderson commits her third foul. That's three Illini players now with three fouls. Bergren, Henderson, and Sheeler, all three key players for Illinois. As Kendra Boss checks back into the game, Valtrami is back. Out go Vassal and Marcy. Team foul number four, excuse me, number five against Illinois. So the Birds aren't too far from getting into the bonus here early in this second half. Here's Valdez with it. Skip pass up top to Griffin. Now it comes right side to Schmidt. Jenny on the drive. Pull up, or a driving shot. Not good. Sheeler rebounds it. And the rebound for Parker. Or the pass to Parker. Here's Parker behind the back with a dribble. Drifting off toward the left wing. Valdez stays with her. She picks up her dribble. Now the lob comes inside. Here's the shot. Not good by Lenhardt, who might have gotten away with the travel. Trami gets the rebound. And the birds come the other way. 14 minutes to play, Redbirds by three. They were up by nine not too long ago as Schmidt stops in the left corner. Up top, Kendra Boss. Now it goes to the wing. Griffin inside to Kendra. She's double teamed, now triple teamed. Finds Griffin, a baseline drive. Bergren is with her. She comes out underneath and shoots it. Not good, and the rebound, Illinois. Sheeler takes it. She came from underneath the bank board, turned and nearly made the shot in traffic. Here's Parker. Henderson at the right baseline. Driving. The help is there. The pass is knocked away by Schmidt. The foul is called. It's a charge against Henderson. Bit of a late whistle, but Valdez was there. And that's the fourth foul now on Ann Henderson. Well, it was good uh, weak side defense. And, and again, that's exactly what the coach is looking for. Somebody to be in that position and, and take the charge when you've got somebody penetrating a little bit out of control. Henderson, the only senior starter for the Illini, now goes to the bench. And Coleman is back in for Teresa Grenz's team. As Schmidt comes into the front court with the dribble. Jenny goes toward the right. 
and the ball goes out of bounds. It's off Illinois State, and it belongs to the Illini. We've lost a little intensity, Dick. I'd say probably on both ends of the court. We need to uh, regain that intensity, be aggressive, and, and be able to finish it off and be successful with our aggressiveness. Here's Parker now against Schmidt. Drives toward the right wing. Her pass down low. Good one to Sheeler, but now the ball knocked out of bounds by Val Trami. Boy, Sheeler had great position, but Val swatted that ball out of play, and Illinois will have to do it over again. Sheeler's doing a nice job of posting up. She's a strong player, and she's able to get the ball in a good position. Here's Bergren driving inside, and somebody's on her arm. Foul is called, and Ashley Bergren, who is scoring fairly well here in the second half, will go to the free throw line. Foul is on Schmidt, and that's Jenny's third. Third team foul. Two shots coming for Bergren, who is four for four from the line so far in this ball game. 13-02 left. Redbirds clinging to a three-point lead. 41-38. A miss by Bergren. The junior from Barrington, Big Ten Player of the Year a season ago, tries again. And this time gets it. Lead is down to two. Schmidt brings it across the timeline for the Birds. Right of the lane drive. Now she gets it back to Mary Jane Owens, who's fouled by Bergren, and that's four on their top player. Bergren went for a steal. She reached, and she pays the price. She picks up her fourth foul. And now what is Teresa Grants going to do? With 12.53 left to go, she's got somebody off the bench. It'd be the first time she's come off the floor, and, and you're right, Dick. She's, she's heading to the bench for a rest, and hopefully that'll mean some positive things for the Birds. Wow, that's a big mistake by last year's Big Ten Player of the Year. Vasey is in for her. And on the line, this is a one-and-one. One. It's already the seventh foul against Illinois is Mary Jane Owens. And MJ makes the shot. Her third point, and the Redbird lead is up to three once again, 42-39. Another one coming here for Owens. The senior from Pleasant Hills, Illinois, who's missed the last couple of Redbird games with that ankle injury. She did not play out in North Carolina. She makes both free throws. Birds have shot the free throw well in this game. Very well. They've only missed two. And they lead by four. 43-39. And now the Birds set up in a 2-3 zone. Here's Vasey with it. Up to the top. Sheeler. Now back to the right side. Parker gets the basketball. Jump pass to Coleman between the rings. Parker with it right wing. Up top. Vasey. And as she turns, she traveled before she shot it. No good anyway. Well, without Bergman on the floor, Illinois looked a little out of sync that time. We've got to be able to capitalize on their turnovers and their mistakes when Bergeron is out in, in anticipation of, of when she does come back. We've got to take advantage of every opportunity. Shanita Stewart just into the ball game, and she travels. as She didn't get the ball down on the floor quite soon enough, but she tried to make the drive from the wing. So the Redbirds return the favor. Illinois has the ball back, down by four. 12-23 to play as Parker gets it to Coleman. Now back to Parker. The freshman with the lob, tipped out of bounds by Owens. And it still belong to Illinois. MJ up there high to get a piece of that one. Coleman now looks and lobs to the wing. Parker has it there. Into the lane she goes, driving past to the corner. Coleman along one is good, and that slices the lead to one point. Coleman gets the three. Seven for her, and it's a 43-42 uh, Illinois State lead. Pass from Stewart inside. Boss is fouled as she forced the action that time down low, and the foul called against Len Hart, and that's her third. Nice read by Kendra Boss, the freshman. Uh, she knew exactly where the defense was. She turned and faced and used her left hand, which was really the only shot she had. So a, a real nice job there by Kendra. Eight fouls in eight minutes here in the second half against the Illini. Boss will shoot two. Only her sixth attempt of the season, and it is good. And the Redbirds here in the second half have made all seven of their attempts. And for the ball game now... They are 13 for 15. Make it 14 for 16 from the line. And that puts them back up by three as we get to an official's timeout. 45 to 42. If the Redbirds win this game, they may have their free throw shooting to thank for the uh, victory. As we now have 11.57 left to play. 45-42 birds. An official's timeout, so we'll take a break. We're back right after this on WJBC. Updating a couple of those other women's scores. Wisconsin continues to hammer Northern Iowa. 72-34 now the score in the second half. And it is Nebraska over Creighton by a dozen. 51-39 in half number two. 
as Illinois now comes across the timeline against the Redbird man-to-man. Schmidt guarding Parker. Here's the pass inside. Lenhart missed the layup. The follow Sheeler. No. The follow Vasey. No, but a foul is called. The Birds couldn't get the defensive rebound, and they wind up committing a foul, and it's on Schmidt, and that on Jenny is number four with 11.44 left to go. ISU's point guard forced out of the ballgame. Well, Jenny has uh, had a history of, of getting in trouble like that, and uh, that's going to hurt the Redbirds as well to have her on the bench, and Jill's trying to ex- explain to her now she can't understand it. Basie misses the first of two free throws. Score still 45-42, Birds by three. Valdez in now to play the point in Schmidt's absent. As Vasey makes the second free throw, the lead is down to two, 45-43. Stewart across the timeline for the Redbirds. Stewart is out there with Owens and Valdez. The inside players are Boss and Vassal. Here's Mary Jane at the right wing, tries to go baseline. Her pass to the corner, and Valdez passed up the opportunity to shoot. Vassal gets it back out to Stewart. Ten to shoot now for the Birds. Here's Shanita moving into the lane, fakes the pass, shoots it way off. Not good, and the rebound for Sheeler of Illinois. Parker ahead to Coleman. The Illini down two with the ball. Eleven minutes to play as Parker is guarded by Valdez. She spins, goes to Coleman in the left corner. Inside it goes. Good pass. Sheeler turning shot is good. We're tied now as Alicia Sheeler has a dozen points. Here's Valdez into the front court. Picks up her dribble. The ball tapped, but Vassal gets it. Parker nearly had the steal. Here's Owens driving, fading and shooting and missing, but a foul maybe before the shot. Vasey is guilty of the foul. It was before the shot. It'll be a one-and-one on the ninth team foul against the Illini. Of course, you might as well in women's basketball stop counting after seven. There is no double bonus in the women's game. Good aggressive uh, play there by MJ. She had the lane to the basket, and she pulled up and, and tried the short short jumper and was fouled. And, and again, reading the defense, knowing she couldn't be successful with two other blue shirts under the basket. Owens makes the free throw. The Redbirds made their final 16 free throws in the victory here against Missouri. And they've got another second-half string going here in this game as Owens makes them both. Didn't want to jinx her, and luckily I didn't. That's uh, <laughs> 10 in a row here in the second half for the Birds, who lead again by two, 47-45. Parker with it now. She picks it up, throws it into traffic, and it's going to be a held ball as Bossel got a piece of it. Then she was tied up by Nicole Vasey. And it'll be Illinois' turn. As Coleman will put it in play. A long look, and now it goes down inside to Lenhart. She throws to the other side, and Sheeler scores the basket. We're tied again. Alicia Sheeler now with 14. Pass from one post player to the other there. Here's Owens with it. Up top, Boss. Now Stewart driving down the middle. Spins, picks up her dribble, and throws it out of play. Valdez had broken toward the baseline, and Shanita threw it behind her. A turnover for the Redbirds gives the Illini a chance to get their first lead since very early in the game. Parker with it now. To the right wing she goes. She picks up her dribble. Sends it down low to Sheeler. Back out to Parker. Cross court pass Coleman. Here's Linhart with it. Now right side to Parker. A zone for the Birds. Coleman with the ball. Illinois moving it quickly. Coleman fouled as she makes the shot off the glass. Coleman really got hammered and she still somehow got that thing through there. Illinois by two and Coleman could make it a three point play. Well, the Birds on defense just are having a few breakdowns right now, and the momentum is, is definitely on the side of the Illini. And uh, Stacy Griffin back in the game. Maybe she can give us a spark on both ends of the court because our offense is getting a little stagnant as well. Griffin and Trami both check in. Out goes Stewart and Boss, who committed that foul. It's her first, and Coleman, with nine points off the bench, is on the free throw line trying to give Illinois a three-point lead, which would equal the Illini's biggest of the night. She missed the free throw, and the rebound, Trami, and the Redbirds come the other way down by just two. Redbirds were up nine at one point earlier in this half. Here's Valdez driving, and she is fouled by Sheeler. And that is four on Alicia Sheeler. So they have three players, three starters, Sheeler, Bergman, and Henderson, all with four fouls. The Redbirds have one player with four on the bench, Jenny Schmidt, as Valdez goes to the free throw line. Their post players have definitely uh, made a difference in the second half, both uh, 
Sheely and uh, Lenhart. Lenhart working together, and if we can get uh, get them in some trouble, that's going to help us definitely. Well, does miss the free throw, so that ends the Redbird string at 10. They rebounded, Illinois does, and the Illini in the front court. Here's Parker across the top, hounded by Valdez. Her pass to Sheeler. Now back out, Coleman drives into the corner. It goes down the baseline, layup Sheeler. She got it. Great ball movement by Illinois. Boy, they know how to work the ball against the zone, and they lead by four, and that's their biggest advantage of the game. Owens with it now for the Birds. Up to the top, Vossel. Kareen driving through the lane, through traffic, left-hand layup is short, the rebound for Coleman of Illinois. And Parker has it now for the Illini, who lead by four with still nine minutes to go in the ballgame. Parker coming toward the right wing. Now with the left-hand dribble, comes back to the lane, here's Coleman's long shot, it's good! From three-point range, Coleman nails the bomb, and the lead is all the way up to seven. 54-47 the score. Vossel to the left side. Griffin gets it. Back to Corrine. The shot by Trami. That's no good. Rebound. Owens underneath the basket. She turns. Fires no, but she's fouled. And Mary Jane will get to the free throw line. Vossel had a wide open 16-footer. A good shot to take. She just didn't make it. Fortunately, we were there for the rebound, and, and we're going to have to continue. If we're not going to be successful on the first shot, to be scrapping aggressive and get the rebound and be able to convert. Now back into the game comes Taja Catchings. No, I'm sorry, that's not Catchings. That's Marco Dill in for the first time. Meanwhile, Jenny Schmidt will check back in for Illinois State. She'll replace Owens, who is on the free throw line. MJ's first is good. Owens is 5 out of 5 from the line. She has 7 points. That's the first Redbird point in a while. As now it's 54-48, Illinois. Grant's questioning something. I think maybe a substitution. At any rate, that's been taken care of. I don't know if we've mentioned our officials this evening. I guess we did. Steve Steltis, the lead man, talking to Grant's there. As the free throw is good for Owens. She gets them both. And she's out of the ball game. And Jenny Schmidt back in with four fouls. Joel feels she can't afford to go any longer without her sophomore point guard. Meanwhile, Bergren continues to sit on the bench for the Illini. But Illinois has played very well without Bergren. Coleman on the left wing. Up top, Parker. Redbirds in the zone as the pass comes inside. Here's Dill with a shot. She blew it. And the rebound for the Redbirds. Schmidt takes it away. And Dill commits the foul. And how many times have we seen a player miss an easy shot and then commit a foul this evening? Well, a number of times. We've, I don't think I have enough fingers to count. But uh, something that definitely gives a coach gray hairs. You, you know, you just you can't have two mistakes in a row. And Jenny Schmidt shoots a one and one so she makes her presence felt immediately as she gets back onto the floor and now makes the free throw and the birds have scored the last three points and have cut the seven point deficit down to four and now jenny cuts it to three she has a dozen points she's made all four of her free throws 54 51 illinois with the lead 8 11 left as parker comes across the timeline here's coleman back to parker redbirds continue with the zone Coleman with it, a three on the way, it's short this time, it's an air ball, rebounded by Valdez Jenny Schmidt with it now Schmidt at the edge of the circle with the dribble, drifts toward the right side, now picks it up and throws it down low into the post, duck under move and a layup, missed by Tommy she was fouled and she will go to the line for two. Oh my, Val making such tremendous moves in the post but unable to do the easy part. I'll tell you, you don't want to see that shot church tonight, Dick, because the area under the basket is going to be filled with empty little circles of missed shots that we've had in the paint. Lenhart commits the foul. That's her fourth. So four Illinois players now with four fouls as Catchings is in and Dill goes out for Illinois. Trami on the free throw line and she fires it no good. Val stands to the left of center at the free throw line and that strategy did not pay off that time. She'll try again looking for her fifth point of the game trying to cut the lead to two and she does. And 
and that gets us to an official's timeout. Well, Birds were up nine earlier in this half, down seven not too long ago. Now they're back to within two at 54 to 52 with 7.48 left. We'll continue in a moment here on WJBC. When the Quarterly Review of Wines refers to your California champagne as the ideal party wine, you're encouraged. When they name it the best California champagne under $9, you get excited. But when this happens three years in a row, it's time for a party and Tots Champagne. The Quarterly Review of Wines has chosen Tots as the best California champagne under $9 three times, which should make the choice easier for you. Tots, listen to the experts. California sparkling wine secondary fermentation before bottling Tots Champagne Cellars, Modesto, California. You're at the mall, holiday shopping with your husband, when suddenly he's gone, vanished. Should you panic? Scream? Alert security? Nah, just find the Radio Shack store, because that's where you'll find him. Plastered to the window, drooling over digital satellite dishes and mini TVs and portable CD players and other cool gifts. Can you learn something from this? Yeah, get gifts for men at Radio Shack, because they got the stuff we're attracted to. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. Men scored Northeastern Illinois on top of Wisconsin Green Bay at the half, 21 to 13. That's a, not the Green Bay Packers, not a football score. That's a basketball score. <laughs> the Birds play the Phoenix of Wisconsin Green Bay later on this season up in Green Bay. That'll be coming up before you know it, I'm sure. That's the uh, I believe that's the 21st of December, and Wisconsin Green Bay has had some tremendous teams here recently. Of course, they've lost their coach Dick Bennett, but one of his assistants took over. And, He's uh, a tough coach as well, although they don't uh, they haven't done very well this year so far. Illinois is inbounded at Lenhart missed the layup and the rebound for the Birds, who now can tie the score. Here's Schmidt across the timeline to Valdez as ISU rebounded that missed layup by Lenhart. Underneath the bucket, Valdez outside Stacy. Three-pointer is too long, not good, and the rebound for the Illini. And now the ball slapped out of bounds by the Birds. Still belongs to Illinois. Good hustle that time by Kareen Vossel to at least get a hand on the rebound and, and, and try to get the deflection. Boy, Griffin shot from deep in the left corner right there, just off the back iron. Good shot to take. It didn't go, and now a loose ball. Scraped away by Griffin, picked off by Schmidt. Stacy Griffin continuing to make the steals as Valdez has it. Now she dribbles it back outside the arc and resets the offense. Cross-court pass, here's Stacy. Baseline drive, Griffin inside shot. No, a whistle charging foul against Griffin. Stacy didn't complain. I think she Either. agreed with the call as Basie is the one who took the charge. Jill was shaking her head, too, and it, it definitely did look like a charge. And that's, again, where you need to recognize when you've got those big bodies in there, you've got to pull up and take a short jumper. So the lead is still two for the Illini who come into the front court. Parker with it now, just under seven minutes to play. Parker a three from the top. It's good. They left her alone, and that is the first basket of the game for freshman Melissa Parker, who doesn't shoot it too often. She elevates the lead to five, 57-52. Here's Valdez driving back to Kareen Vassal, and she'll be called for a walk as she tried to attack the basket from the top. Once again, she is not effective when she's trying to dribble. She needs to pass it and, and, and try to work to get the ball back on a pass. Illinois back into the front court. Parker at the top. The lob to Coleman. Now Parker with it. Here it goes to Vasey. Cross court pass. Coleman open. A three. It is good. Coleman nails another three. And the Redbird deficit is eight points. That's as big as it's been all game long. Timeout. 20 second timeout called by Joe Hutchison with now 6 11 left to play. Boy, suddenly they are hitting their threes, and against the Redbird zone, they're getting their opportunities to shoot the threes. They're getting hot on the offensive end, and, and Dick, we're shooting now 31%, and, uh, you know, with only 14 field goals, you're not going to win many ball games that way. And the Redbirds have gone, I, did, I didn't realize it was this long, 10 minutes now, more than 10 minutes without a field goal. They have scored several free throws during that period. In fact, I think maybe like about 10 or 12 free throws. 11, 11 points on free throws okay. from the 16:42 mark, which was the last time we did score a field goal. And again, you know, we're getting great shots. They're, they're just not falling. The Illini, on the other hand, on their offensive end, are, are doing a great job just working our zone, kind of playing with it and, and, and waiting until we're out of position on a long pass. And, and they're right now hot from the outside. They're hitting the outside shot. I guess the amazing thing is you go ten and a half minutes without scoring a field goal and you're still in the ball game. 
got to be happy with that. That is pretty amazing. And and now this, obviously the stretch run here, and, and Jill not happy calling that timeout. We've got to make some changes on both ends of the court to be able to, to get back and, and tie it up and hopefully take the lead. Starting lineup still on the floor. Schmidt playing with four fouls. Griffin, Valdez, Vassal, and Trami, the others out there. The Illini continue to go without Bertram. They like the way this unit is playing. Parker, Coleman, Vasey, uh, Catchings, and uh, Lenhart as the Redbirds have put it in play. Here's the drive by Schmidt. Baseline jumper. Good. Jenny off the dribble. Makes a 13-footer. She has 14 points. Redbirds back to within a half dozen. 60-54 to 54 the score. Here's Catchings with it. Driving on Griffin. Her pass tipped, but it is loose. Now taken by Valdez. Here come the Birds. Here's the pass ahead to Vassal. Layup is good. And the Redbirds are within four. Great steal. And then they executed the fast break to perfection. Vassal's third basket. Her first of the second half. Parker now inside. It goes Lenhart a layup. She blew it. And the rebound, Vassal. Trami went for the steal, and that left Lenhart wide open, and she missed a layup. Didn't even draw any iron. It just hit the glass. Valdez with it now as the birds are within four with the ball. Here's Schmidt. Up top, Trami with it. To Valdez in the right corner. Kristen puts it on the floor and spins it up top to Schmidt. Jenny, a bomb. It is off the mark, and the rebound for Coleman. Schmidt that time about 22 feet away, and I'm not sure that's the shot the birds wanted there. Parker on the right side. Spins on Schmidt, and Jenny stays with her. Here's Basie, and she traveled. Griffin helped force that mistake. Again, uh, Dick, we have got to be able to take advantage being four points down. Anytime they make a turnover or miss a shot, we have got to come down and capitalize. And, Bergren and back in the ballgame now, Leanna, along with Sheeler. As Illinois State is in the front court, here's... Schmidt to Vassal, now right wing Valdez. Birds within four. They were down eight not long ago. Here's Schmidt, 17 footer, rolling, not good. And on the rebound, we've got a push and a foul, and it goes against the Redbirds. Ball hit the inside of the rim a couple of times, but came out of there. And the Redbirds fouling on the rebound effort, and now free throws are coming here for the Illini with 4.33 left to play. It's Bergren on the line. As she shoots it, no good, and the rebound for Illinois State. Valdez picked it out of there. And the Redbirds still down by just four. Here's the pass to Vassal. Layup is good. She faded to avoid the block effort by catching. Great play by Corrine. And the Birds are within two. They've scored the last three baskets. Now ranking back in the ballgame for Illinois. She finds Sheeler on the wing. Cross-court pass. It comes to Catchings. Shovels it inside. Vasey lost it, but that's because she was fouled. And free throw is coming once again for the Illini. With now 4.08 left, the Redbirds down eight. Not long ago, are suddenly back to within two as that field goal drought is ancient history now. They've hit three shots here in the recent going. Meanwhile, Vasey on the free throw line. She fires it short, not good. She was fouled in the act of shooting, they say, and so she gets another one. She eyes the hoop and fires it. Not good, and the rebound for the Birds. Griffin with it. They can't get it in the basket right now as they've missed three free throws here in the recent going, and they're still stuck on 60. Here's the lob to Vassal. Layup is good, and we are tied. 60 apiece. Corrine has scored the last three baskets of the game. Ranking with it now. Right side drive her lob down to Vasey. She lost it. Loose ball, scramble, and it's a hell ball, and it is Illinois State's turn with 3.43 to go. Well, Dick, I'm not sure what Jill said during that last time out, but it's definitely a different Illinois State team now on the court on both, both ends of the floor. Catchings is out. Vasey is out. Back into the game comes Lenhart, also Coleman, as Teresa Grintz looks for the right combination. What a streaky game it's been here in the second half. Griffin with it for the Birds. Stacy's pass tipped and out of bounds, and it's off of Illinois and still belongs to the Redbirds. Birds almost lost it there. 
3.33 left. It's a brand new ball game. 60-60 the score. As Griffin puts it in play to the baseline. Here's the shot by Vassal. It's good. Count it. Foul is called. And the Redbirds have taken the lead. Vassal has scored the last eight points of the game. Great job by Vassal. And, and she definitely has the fire right now and, and isn't afraid of anyone. She's uh, playing up against the bigger players and just taking it to the basket. Foul is on Coleman. It's her second. Kareem will try to convert the three-point play and put the birds up by three. As she shoots it and gets it, the junior from Chicago now has 16 points, and the Redbird lead is three. They have scored the last 11 points of the game. Nine of those scored by Vassal. Here's Ranking with it in the right corner. Guarded in the man-to-man by Valdez. Sheeler with the ball, hounded by Trami. Birds are keyed up right now, and now we got a whistle. And a timeout called by Teresa Krentz with 3.14 left to go. It's a full timeout, so we'll take a break. 63-60, the Redbirds suddenly have regained the lead here at the arena as we're back after this on WJBC. Birds have been out-rebounded in this game, 42-30. to 30. A dozen rebounds for Alicia Sheeler of Illinois. But nonetheless, the Redbirds lead 63-60 to 60 as Coleman gets set to put it in play against the man-to-man. Here's Bergren with it. And Coleman around the horn. Ranking drives past to the baseline. Stolen by Griffin. Stacy Griffin's got it. She gets it back to Valdez. How many steals is that for Stacy this evening? That's about her sixth or seventh as she finds Bossel. Now to Valdez. Illinois in the man-to-man. 2.53 to go. Redbirds by three with the ball. Here's Griffin inside. Trami turns. And as she shoots it, she's called for a walk. She made it that time. Good left-hand hook shot. But she walked before she did. Val doing a lot of great things, but not putting it together. No, and, and she had a defensive player there, and there was no way she was going to shoot over, and she needed that extra step to get close to the basket. So Illinois with the basketball down by three. Here's Parker with it on the right wing. Parker driving into the lane, gives up the dribble, feeds it to Coleman. She walked. She had trouble catching the ball, couldn't get it down on the floor soon enough. The team's trade turnovers were down to 238 left. Well, nobody hurt there, but again, we've got to build on this three-point lead. It's definitely not a safe one. Jenny Schmidt playing with four fouls across the timeline, goes toward the left wing. And picks up her dribble, spins. She's got to find somebody and does get it to Trami. Trami driving the pass back to Valdez. 15 to shoot for the birds. Here's Griffin. Fossil with it. Kareem to the left wing. Schmidt with the ball. Eight to shoot. Schmidt driving, pulling, shooting, and missing in the rebound for Lenhart. Good driving shot effort by Schmidt, but it rolled off the rim. Not good. And the Illini with two minutes now to play. Have it in the front court. Birds by three. 63 to 60. Illinois State has scored the last 11 in this game as Parker forces it up and misses it. And the rebound for the Birds, but a whistle and a foul. And it's against the Redbirds. Oh, boy. Foul on Val. She had great position, yep. and maybe that's why. I didn't see her push anybody, though, Leanna. Well, and, you know, she's not real happy, and neither is Jill, but Val's just trying to be real positive now in the court, and uh, she huddled everybody up, and, and we, we still got almost two minutes to go, and can't dwell on that. We've got to move on. Sheila on the free throw line, one and one. She missed it. The rebound for them. Linhart had it knocked out of bounds by Valdez, who nearly made the steal. Too bad. And Illinois will put it in play. 153 left in the game. Birds by three. Here it comes down low. Now it's shoveled out to Coleman. Up on top. Parker a three. That one's off. And the rebound for Trami. And the Birds have the three-point lead in the ball. As Griffin has it across the timeline. Here's Stacy at the wing. 100 seconds to go. As Trami gets the ball and pushes it up to the top to Valdez. 15 to shoot for the Birds. Griffin with it. Angles toward the bucket. Stops at the baseline. Pedals it back to Vossel. Ten to shoot. Valdez with it. Kristen driving into the lane. Shot blocked partially. Whistle foul is called. It's against Illinois. A little movement that time, I believe, by Lenhart, which will put her on the bench. Yes, it is her fifth foul. And with 1.20 to go, the Birds are at the line with a three-point lead. 
Well, and we had an opportunity there. Uh, Stacy was guarding, or I'm sorry, Ashley Bergman was guarding Stacy, and I thought Stacy might go ahead and take her to the basket uh, with her being in foul trouble. But we'll we'll take losing Lenhart. She's had a great game for him, and uh, that's definitely going to help us down this stretch. And Valdez at the line this evening has made three out of five for the season. Now she's nine for twelve. She makes either of these. Well, she gets a... Yeah, she'll get two. That's right, fouled in the act. So if she makes either, she will put Illinois behind by two possessions, which is critical at this juncture. Vasey back in the ball game for Illinois as Valdez shoots the first one good, and the lead is up to four. 64 to 60. That's a dozen points in a row for the home team. Another one for the native of Boulder, Colorado. It is no good. And the rebound pushed to the corner and taken by Coleman. And here comes Illinois. Valdez applying some pressure. Parker gets it across the timeline with the dribble. And moves all the way to the baseline. And as she does, we've got a whistle and a foul against the Birds. A very ill-advised foul that time by Illinois State with 1.09 left. That puts the Illini at the line. Only nine seconds off the shot clock that time as well. And, you know, you hate to... I hate to do that. It's against Stacey Griffin. She is fouled out of the game. What a great game she has played. She finishes with seven points, all of which came in the first half, but what a force she was on the defensive side of the floor. Yeah, she did a lot of things that aren't going to show up on a stat sheet, and, and, and she's been doing that now for the last two or three games, doing a nice job. Parker is the player at the line for the Illini. Nine out of 12 coming into the game. This is her first attempt in this game with 69 seconds to go and her team down by four. The freshman has to be feeling some pressure. It is a one and one And it's up and it is good. Right through the middle. And that is the first point for Illinois in a long time. The Birds had strung together 12 straight. Another one for... Melissa Parker, that's no good. The rebound fought for. Tromi's got it. Parker nearly reached in there and got it. Redbirds lead by three. And here's Schmidt across the timeline. Jenny driving into the front court. Tromi with it now. To Mary Jane Owens into the game. She replaced Griffin. Mary Jane picks it up and finds Bossel. Now up to the top to Valdez. Birds use as much as they can of the shot clock. Now it's 10 to shoot. Schmidt drives, picks it up and finds Vossel. Here's Kareen. She goes to Trami and Val travels. With five seconds left on the shot clock and 43 seconds to go in the game, Illinois has the ball down by three. Parker with it now for the Illini. Comes across the timeline and calls for a timeout, during which we'll keep it here. 38 seconds to go. Redbirds by three. And we're in the situation now, Leanna, where if Illinois scores and takes at least eight seconds to do so, even if it's a three, the Redbirds could save it for a final shot and either win or go to overtime. Of course, it could come down to free throws. The Birds are going to be put at that line if Illinois doesn't tie it up on this possession, and they're going to have to make some free throws. Exactly, and you know we've, we've done a, a fairly good job tonight hitting our free throws. Kristen missing that one is a little out of character, but uh, you know the sign of a good team is a team that can get down to crunch time and, and step to the line and, and hit their free throws and, and then go back and play good defense. Do what you need to do to win the game. Yeah, Illinois has missed some clutch free throws down the stretch here as well. The Birds doing a better job in that department by far. They've gotten to the line more often and they've made a better percentage. Birds are 23 for 28. The Illini 9 for 17. That really says something for ISU's uh, offensive intensity that they've gotten to the line 11 more times than Illinois. Exactly. It's just, you know, the aggressiveness that we've been able to uh, actually find again in the second half. I think, you know, we started the second half without that aggressiveness and, and we've gone through the stretch now where we've finally been able to be successful offensively and hit some of those uh, easy shots that we were missing earlier. Well, since that drought for the Birds where they went over 10 minutes without scoring a field goal, they have outscored the Illini 12-1. to And I go back to that again, Leanna. Incredibly, you go 10 and a half minutes without a field goal and you got a great chance to win nonetheless as the Illini put it in play. Sheeler shovels it to Coleman. Here's Parker at the top. She drives the right wing. Owen stays with her. They want to get it to Bergeron. They do underneath. She shoots it, and she rolls it good. And that cuts the lead to one. And now there's 26 seconds to go. And the Birds against full court pressure have got to get it. Yeah, there's such sticklers over there. <laughs> I, I hate that when they pay attention to every detail. <laughs> Jeez, they're the visitors. <laughs> that obviously a critical basket for the Illini. They needed to score something there. And now if the Redbirds can 
get the ball in play and get it into the front court. Illinois will have to commit the foul because the shot clock has been turned off. It's a 30-second shot clock in the women's game, but we're under 30 seconds to go. And so unless Illinois can force a turnover, they've got to put the birds at the line. That's exactly right. And, you know, fortunately, you know, you've mentioned, you know, we're down by so many points and to, to come back and go that long without a field goal. And when you look at the stats, I mean, we have uh, six less field goals than the, than the line. Yeah. So fortunately, we have been able to, uh, you know, be successful at the free throw line. And you know what? They all count one or two and whatever it takes. So, you know, we'll, we'll take them. And, and uh, hopefully now we can, we can inbound the ball and, and hold on to this slim one-point lead. Birds out, rebounded by 14. As you say, they have six fewer field goals. They go ten and a half minutes without scoring a field goal. And they lead with 26 seconds to go as Vossel looks to put it in play against the pressure. Gets it to the right person, Jenny Schmidt. Her defender falls down. Now Trami has it in the backcourt. Now remember, no 10-second rule in women's basketball. And that's a help here to the Birds as the foul is committed. And Schmidt is the player who will go to the free throw line. And That's really a big factor in, in this game at this point. Absolutely, and you know, Jill was standing on the sideline. She's telling him now, get the ball down the court. We had some people down there. It's so dangerous when you pass the ball back and forth in front of their basket. So again, we had luck on our side and, and we got the foul and now we got to hit free throws. Jenny Schmidt eyes the hoop and shoots it. Good boy, she didn't waste any time. She took it from the official and fired it right through the middle and that elevates the lead back to two. And now let's see if she can do it again. Jenny is 5 for 5 from the line in this game, and now she's 6 for 6, and the Redbird lead is 3 points. Parker with the ball for the Illini. We're down to 16 seconds to go. Parker to the left baseline, picks it up, wings it up top to Coleman. Desperation 3, not good. The rebound, Birds. Valdez has it. 8 seconds to play. Here's the pass to Jenny. The Redbirds are going to win. Trami puts it up and rolls it good with 2 seconds left. 68-63. That'll be your final score as Valdez intercepts the pass, and the Redbirds have defeated the Illini. Great win for the Redbirds. After last year's loss, there's a there's a lot uh, riding on the line here. So state bragging rights. Well, you could see it in the uh, look on the Redbird faces as they knew they had won this game. They're a happy group right now. Well, on that last pass that Kristen intercepted at half court, she was laughing as she went up to, for the interception. So they knew they had the victory at that point. Boy, oh boy, the Birds with a nine-point lead at one junction in the second half. They let that melt away and the Illini built a lead of their own all the way up to seven. That was that period during which the Birds went through the field goal drought, didn't score one for over ten minutes, but they recovered and came from that seven-point deficit to win this thing by five, 68 to 63. They even up their record. They're now three and three on the season. What a nice win for the Lady Birds. We'll talk with one of the players. We'll visit with head coach Jill Hutchison as the Birds knock off the fighting Illini here, 68 to 63.